Good evening, I'm Roger Howell. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I sure hope that next year we'll be back in person. But tonight is a special evening. It is our 30th banquet since our first merger back in 1992. The years have flown by and it has been amazing to see what God has done. God has significantly grown all four cause areas of City Gospel Mission. But tonight we are focusing on our at-risk youth programs. Some of you tonight are new to City Gospel Mission youth programs. Welcome and thank you for joining us. I am confident that you will be excited and inspired by what you are going to see. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me or one of our staff. Many of you have been faithful supporters for many, many years. Thank you so much. It is because of you that so many youth have been helped physically, socially, and mentally. And most importantly, because of you, so many have come to know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. Our youth programs have grown significantly over the last 30 years. We now work with many, many more youth than we used to. We now partner with many more churches than we used to. And we now have 10 different programs that local churches can use to reach out to at-risk youth in their neighborhood. As you all know, this past year has been extremely difficult, especially on youth programs. For most of the year, our staff could not be in person with the kids or having activities. Everything was so different. It was hard to build relationships, so hard to show how much you cared, so hard to have fun activities. But our staff and volunteers' creativity came through. We didn't cancel, we got creative. Our staff and volunteers' care and concern went above and beyond the call of duty to meet physical, social, educational, and spiritual needs. You are going to hear in detail about some of those ways tonight. But here is a list to give you an idea of what our phenomenal staff did. TikTok contest, food blessing baskets, backpack and school supply deliveries, Christmas basket deliveries, fresh fruit and healthy snack baskets, virtual game night, virtual cookie night, social distancing scavenger hunts, and of course, many, many FaceTime and Zoom conversations. And most important, every year, more and more kids and family are deciding to follow Jesus. Let me tell you about Alexandria. She and her sister have been part of Princess Ballet for a while. Gordon Havens, Princess Ballet director, has been sharing about Jesus with not only her, but also her mother. A few weeks ago, Gordon was preaching at his church and he invited them to come. Just to clarify, they were social distance and had masks on. But when Gordon invited folks to come to the altar, Alexandria and her cousin and her mother came forward to accept Christ. And there has been obvious change in all three of their lives since. That is what City Gospel Mission at-risk youth programs are all about. And all of that growth could not have happened without you, our supporters, our donors, our volunteers, and our prayer warriors. So thank you so much. But it is time to move onward together together with you and our great supporters and volunteers and great staff, so that more and more children and youth and families will be impacted here on earth and of course later in heaven. So please stay tuned in to see more stories of the ministries of City Gospel Mission Youth Programs. God bless you. Welcome to this year's Investing in Youth Online Banquet. I'm Barry Baker, Executive Vice President of Youth Programs. Whether you're a longtime supporter or a first time friend, know you're so appreciated by our staff and the thousands of youth who are impacted by our programs every year. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce to you John Albritton. John has recently moved into a critical role providing leadership for our youth programs. John and I'll be back at the end of our banquet to wrap things up. Before we get started, John, do you mind praying for our banquet? Barry, I'd love to. First, let me say it's a blessing to be part of City Gospel Mission's youth team, and I'm really excited about the future and where we're headed. Let's pray. Father, we praise you for this evening. We praise you for our friends at City Gospel Mission, our volunteers and church partners. 
We praise you for those that you have allowed us to walk alongside to help change their lives. We praise you for those that are here this evening and those that are not here that are willing to support us and lend a hand. We thank you for your wisdom, your guidance, and your blessings. We thank you for this evening of celebration. These things we pray, amen. amen. All right, settle in and get ready to enjoy some moving stories and testimonies that are guaranteed to make you smile, make you cry, and confirm that we serve a mighty God. We have a big goal this banquet, and I think together we can achieve it. Thank you for being here. Hi there, I'm WLWT News 5's Sheree Palello, and I'm joined this year with my co-anchor tonight, Miss Ruby. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> it is so good to be here with you all online at City Gospel Mission's annual Investing in Youth Banquet, presented by United Dairy Farmers and Faith Financial Advisors. Our theme is Onward Together. Onward Together. Now, this theme means so many things for all of us. It's a reminder of the value of connection and relationships as we race back to normal. No one can do it alone. When we come together, it makes finding our North Star possible again. You're going to learn more about what that entails for City Gospel Mission's cradle to career approach to serving at risk youth. Ruby, I understand that you are a friend of the Little Village Stay and Play program, right? Yeah. So, mommies and babies go there and including kids by themselves go there. But I don't know what to say. <laughs> So fun, right? Little Village is a free play space where kids can go and have fun and learn with other kids. There's even moms and babies there as well. Little Village provides the opportunity for play, learning, and community relationships for families to really thrive together. Do you know that Little Village has provided 900 hours of safe play since last March? I love Little Village! <laughs> she said it best. Our hope is that you're going to be inspired and encouraged to support the incredible work of City Gospel Mission. You can text Youth Banquet to 41444 at any time to make a donation. You're going to see your gift appear in real time on the event page here. That's what I'm all about. City Gospel Mission is all about. Breaking the cycle of poverty and despair is our mission. For many, that cycle lasts for generations. That's what inspired James Gamble of Procter & Gamble to found City Gospel Mission in 1924. Our focus has always been on relationships, and with support from hundreds of churches and countless volunteers, we help thousands of people and families each year in the greater Cincinnati area. We focus on four main causes, food and shelter, recovery, 
jobs, and youth. At our emergency homeless shelter, there is dignity. Guests receive three meals a day, safe shelter, and guidance to succeed long-term. In our recovery program, there is deliverance. Men and women get the support they need to overcome life-controlling issues. In our jobs program, there is independence. Job seekers receive the training they need and get help securing a job. And in our youth programs, there is determination. At-risk youth are guided from cradle to career so that they will flourish and be free of the cycle. We're breaking the cycle of poverty and despair one life at a time. Sharing God's love together and the hope that comes with it is still the way. Hi everyone, I'm Nathan. I'm a student in the Virtual Cherokee WizKids program and I'm happy to be your WizKids banquet host. WizKids is a tutoring program that pairs a caring adult with an elementary school student like me. Tutoring has the power to boost grades, create strong readers, and improve confidence. Now for the top WizKids stories from the last year. Over 800 students showed God's love through drop-offs, blessing baskets, with school supplies, snacks, and balloons. There are three new ways to stay connected were launched. Wiz Pals, Wiz Go, and virtual tutoring and mentoring. Students, parents, and volunteers reported feeling a closer connection to each other than ever before even during social distancing. I've just been told that the Roberts Unplugged site that was virtual this year was learning how to cook and bake. Tutors dropped off supplies to the students and they would follow the recipe together online. Awesome. Thank you to everyone for your support to make life change possible. And from all of us kids, thank you for learning how to Zoom. Hi, Miss Summer. Hi, um, I can't see you. Can you go to the bottom left-hand corner and just like tap that video camera? Hey, now I can see you. How has your week been? Good. Good, define good for me. Hey, I gotta be on my geometry test. Hey man, that's pretty darn good. Just a little secret between you and me. I was never really good at geometry. <laughs> uh, the questions, they were so difficult. They would ask questions like, Why aren't they any more dinosaurs? Um, guess what? What? My birthday's tomorrow. Well, guess what? What? Mine is the day after tomorrow. No way. Yes way. Bro, come on, man. I'm so proud of you. So when's your interview? Like Friday? Why is Friday called Friday? You know, that's a great question. So how does it feel leaving middle school behind? Uh, it's weird. How so? Uh, it's a big change. High school's definitely a big change. I know change is good, but it doesn't make it any less scary. What about this new job scares you? I think I'm just a little too comfortable where I'm at. Miss Summer, what happens when you die? It's just that me and Peyton had such big plans for our high school years. And having Peyton move to another state over the summer, I just won't have any friends. And I made so many friends at the store, it would be hard to just start over with a new job. Charlie, I don't think any of this nervousness has to do with any outside factor. I, I think... You're afraid of change, but this is what I've come to learn. Uh, change is good. With change comes a great opportunity for growth. And I know that in this place, you're going to grow in so many ways. How so? Well, financial literacy for one. 
Um, but even better than that, leadership skills. Well, I wouldn't be a position of leadership. Oh, that doesn't matter. Sometimes you just got to take a leap of faith. Making new friends in a new place is always going to be difficult. But you're a good kid, a smart kid. Even in times when you feel like you're alone, you are not alone. God is always with you, looking after you and keeping you and your family safe. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Do you have any other questions? Did you give me a birthday gift? Before I answer that, did you get me a birthday gift? If you need anybody to hype you up before your interview, you know who to call. <laughs> All right, I got to get going. Oh, oh, same time next week? Same time next week. Bye. Bye. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Wait, Miss Summer, why is there so many languages in the world? Well... Hello everyone, I'm Tiela. I started out in WizKids and my tutor is now my mentor after all these years. She still helps me to think big today. It's an honor to be the Rising Scholars segment host. Rising Scholars remove barriers for Christian students that have leadership potential but lack support they need to craft their future story. To help more Rising Scholars realize their dreams, you can text Youth Banquet to 41444 anytime during the program. And now for the top rising scholar stories from the last year. Every urban scholar student that was attending CCU when they shut down successfully found another university, had their tuition paid and graduated. Students were invited to virtual summit events that focused on topics such as college and career research, goal setting and leadership. One student said of the Financial Literacy Forum, I knew I wanted to know this stuff, but I didn't know where to go to find it. And finally, let's hear about Wilfredo, a success story that's been a decade in the making. We hope you enjoy. Here we are. That's yes, this beautiful area. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. But I'm not just saying like, we're here we are in this building. I'm saying like, here we are as a people in our faith and everything we did together and building up our friendships and those hard times we had in our life. How long has it been? Like. 10 years. Really? That long? Look, you're about to be 18. Mm -hmm. When I came into the fold of this whole thing, I was 18 too. It's surprising for both of us when we came so, we came so far to this today now, to, to today. And it's pretty awesome because now we have people that we know, like we trust really confidently and we know they have our back and we can have their back more often than we should be, than we should think about. It obviously wasn't always that way. It wasn't. It, it was wasn't. really it, it wasn't. Because when I came in into all of this, you weren't ambitious like I was. You weren't hot-headed like I was. How, how would you describe yourself? More playful. Playful? <laughs> playful and, uh, for, uh, like, a lot, and, and outgoing, actually, remember? I was really, really, like, moving around pretty a lot. Pretty high energy. Yeah. You're pretty high energy. Unpredictable. Unpredictable. I was super unpredictable when I was a little kid. I want to talk through the middle part, right? There were groups of people and there were programs that helped you see what was always there, but you couldn't see mm. what were those programs, who were those people, and what was it about those programs and people that helped you see everything that you see now and the way that you see the world. Your dad, I met your dad at church, and then Ms. Ms. Stutzman actually came when she was in my school. She was my first teacher. So Ms. Jackson and Ms. Stutzman were probably your closest teachers. Mm -hmm. The and ones. Yeah, Ms. The, Jackson later on came to our church, remember? Ms. Jackson now does serve at our church. Let's talk about church. That's where you met Pastor Stephanie, Ms. Stephanie, who was your children's pastor. You met Pastor Minor, Pastor Isis yeah, there. Yeah, Pastor Isis is actually also one of the people that I also saw, like, looked up to as well because as a role model. And you were one of the people that were like, dude, grow up and then like you show me like 
No, you said it in your own way, remember? <laughs> yeah. You told me like, grow up. And I went like, I thought about it. That's when I started to think about like the people I hang around with, like the people that had like bad, like my, I hanged out with that showed me how to act bad and all. I started to lose him slowly, slowly by high school. Like after I got to this 10th or 11th grade, you saw like my grades went up. Like I left all of them and I started to be myself and improve myself in general. And I have you guys for it because you guys supported me in those moments when I went through some real, real hard stuff that you were just there and like going like, bro, keep it up. You, you got this forward, keep moving forward. And you pushed me forward and here I am now. Yes, you are, man. God, that's my boy. I think you seeing us grow in our faith all this time, not just us, even the adults, but the, the friends that you met along the way. I think being in an environment where you saw our faith growing kind of inspired you. Grow, grow in certain aspects, yes, actually. Because part of me went like, I want to be like that. I want to keep growing. But the other part of me that I didn't, I accepted more often was like, no, just keep being your lack, lackluster self. But like when I did finally understand that part of me that goes like, grow in the faith, that's when I started to win like, oh my God, I can keep growing each hour in understanding this moment. So like right now, that I'm even still growing in certain aspects that I don't understand very well, but I'm trying to understand to get better at it. Let me ask you another silly question. Go for it, fam. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think you would have been without the support, without the village that just embraced you? Like a bully, maybe like a bully, maybe like a person that drops out or like not, doesn't care about education or like cares about like what I am anymore. Be like one of those type of kids, like the, delin the delinquent, is that, called, is that correctly? Yeah, like, yeah, I would be like a delinquent, a really bad delinquent that maybe would die. Yeah, like if I did something really stupid, maybe would be dead right now or maybe not be in the mental hospital for a while because I would be like, I won't have a grasp of understanding what I do and all that. Silly question part two, where are you now because of the support you've gotten? I'm actually in a really good safe air environment that I can, I have really trust, a really, really good trust and I can understand and be open with you guys. and. You guys are there with me when I, you, you're one of the people that when I do open up, you understand very well. And you can also tell you, you can also help me. Like you can kind of push me to open, open up to Trisha and all of my other friends slowly by slowly. You, you're there with when I need you and all that. You guys have always been there. And what I have now, the people that I have now are really, 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 cher I'm cherishing every moment with you guys because you guys are really those type of people that if I didn't have, I would be, I don't know where I would be right now. I would be one of those lost kids forever and ever. I remember when you were, when I could pick you up on my shoulders. I remember just all the stories about who you were. And I just am thankful, right? As, as I'm sure you are, this whole village that just believed in you. I love that it was all of us. It was one collaborative effort. Like what comes next? is as important, as epic, as inspiring. You inspire people because of the decisions you chose to I make. I want to inspire them because I want them to see like what they can see in me, what they're going through. It's the same thing us seniors go through day to day, but they can see it and take it as a checkbook for them to understand like, oh, I can keep pushing myself. But I need to find the right people or the right crew that I can be with that can help them build up. But at the same time, I want them to check themselves, like see like who they are as an individual. Like what, 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 is, what makes them happy? What gives them like that a thrill? I think thrill, like a good emotion that they can keep forever and go like each time they can recall it and go like, this was one of the moments I really cherish forever and ever. What are you about to do here in shy of a couple weeks? I'm about to graduate and then join a program that helps me in project search. It's a checkpoint for me to see like what I like and what I dislike. It's like a little job opportunity that can, that can give me. I won't get paid, but it will give me hands-on experience to see like, do I like this job that I'm really thinking about going for college or not? It makes me think a lot of things and all that. I'm so proud of how far God has taken both of us. And you know what the best part is for me? There's still more coming. There's still more coming. Yeah. We're not even done yet. Yay. <laughs> I don't say this enough. I'm proud of you, man. Thanks, and man. I love you. Thanks. I also, too, I cherish you as a brother, as also a big person I look up to as one in certain aspects of your life. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks man. Thanks, man.
Iya. <laughs> Are you feeling inspired by these successful stories? Hello everyone, I am Sierra and I am the host of the Princess's Ballet segment. Princess's Ballet is a free ballet program for girls ages 3 through 18 at 21 different sites. I started Princess's Ballet in 2015 and since then I have learned a lot about dancing, hard work and God's love. I am excited to share with you some good news from Princess's Ballet thanks to your support. Last year, brand new top-notch ballet studio was open. Sites that met in person are celebrating their success this year by performing on sites with a city-wide recital. Princess's Ballet held virtual lessons, Bible study, and sometimes cheering for homework help. Several students and even parents received Jesus. Your support today means there will be more stories just like these next year. Thank you. She is an incredibly creative person. She has a constant outpouring of creativity. Um, any spare moment she has, she's knitting, crocheting, drawing, painting, making something. It's a constant outpouring of creativity. She's an incredible storyteller. She has drawing books and she'll fill the whole book and each picture she draws is like a story within itself. It's just so fun to look through that because you know there's a story happening in her mind at the same time that she's creating this artwork. Right at the moment, one of the dreams that she has stated is that she would love to be an author. And you could just see, you know, she wants to be able to draw the pictures and tell the story. And she has an incredibly creative mind. At school, it was becoming increasingly apparent that she was going to have trouble reading. And then later, a diagnosis of dyslexia came as well. And I had been a teacher before. And I had seen students where they would struggle all day at school and then go home with homework and struggle all evening. And I had seen students, you know, where their extracurriculars had been taken away so they could work on schoolwork and that that just was never the answer because they needed something in the evening that built them up that they could feel good about. Alta Rose loves dance. When she was three, we went to the Nutcracker and she didn't move a muscle for the entire time. It was, she just sat there going, I'm watching ballerinas. She loved dancing and she was getting stronger and stronger at it. She felt really good about it. And so I really wanted to just keep something that she could feel really good about. One of the things that impressed me really quickly with Princess's Ballet was she was coming home with detailed knowledge of what's in the Bible, which I've studied the Bible quite a bit myself. Um, but I was like, wait, where are you getting this? <laughs> and it was, she had learned that from Gordon. Being at Princess Ballet, Rose has grown in her physical strength, in her physical abilities, in her technique, in her bearing on stage to be able to perform and have good posture. The choreographers and the dancers together have that ability to weave a story without any words at all. So you don't even have to be able to hear or <laughs> speak the same language and you'll understand the story.
Rose is very um, inspired by some authors that are dyslexic themselves, because being dyslexic does not stop you from being a great storyteller. In fact, maybe helps because it, she has this view of the world that's very expansive and big, and she sees the whole big picture all at once. Well, when you asked me to describe her when she dances, the first thing I envision, our family likes to vacation on the beach, and she loves going down in the waves and dancing in the waves, and we have some beautiful pictures of her and striking ballet poses in the waves. And as part of her constant outpouring and creativity, the dance is just part of that, that she expresses her emotions and her feelings and everything that's inside through dancing.
We want to thank everyone for joining us. Tonight, you have a chance to be that North Star for at-risk kids in Greater Cincinnati. And as a bonus, your gift is going to be matched. Your gift tonight can literally change a child's future. This event provides 25% of the funding for City Gospel Missions youth programs. Will you help light the way onward? And stick around for just a few more minutes for a talk with Barry Baker and John Albritton. On behalf of City Gospel Mission and the youth that you invested in, thanks so much. Good night. Good night. <laughs>I absolutely love these stories because it shows God wasn't slowed down by the pandemic. Our ministry approach was pressed to change over this last year, but not our mission. In fact, as only God can, the Lord took what could have been a very difficult year with little ministry taking place and made it a year where lives continued to be transformed. God turned this past year into an amazing learning experience for our staff that will impact how we do our programs for years to come. That's right. We are looking forward to getting back to face-to-face in-person tutoring and WIS kids, but we plan to incorporate what we've learned from the porch blessings and WIS pals in our ongoing ministry. We found meeting families on their front porch where they live is a tangible way to express God's love. The power of writing and receiving letters, a lost art in our culture today, is another way of connecting with our WIS kids. Our Hispanic outreach programs deliver groceries and meals to under-resourced families that were hit hard by the pandemic. We thank God that most of these families are getting back to work, but with the at-home visits paid huge dividends in the building trust and developing relationships. Our Teen Impact program met teams where they were and took to using social media and technology to reach teens over this last year, and it proved to be invaluable. To some extent, this is today's teens' front porch. Our staff and volunteers are clearly looking forward to in-person ministry, but leveraging technology to reach teens for Christ is here to stay. We had two huge blessings take place over this past year concerning our college scholarship program. We saw the last of our urban scholars graduate from college, making it a total of 28 students who became the first person in their families to graduate. Those students have gone on to serve in a wide variety of fields, including school teachers, counselors, social workers, and pastors. Three of our Urban Scholar graduates are working with at-risk teens right here in Cincinnati, two of them on staff with City Gospel Mission. The Urban Scholars program ended when Cincinnati Christian University came to a close, but now we're launching a brand new program called Jeremiah Scholarships. This program came from the heart and vision of a Bible study group at one of our partner churches. It is now providing financial assistance to students who come through the City Gospel Mission programs that want to pursue education beyond high school. This is another example of how God took a door that closed and turned it into an open door that will bless youth and families for years and years to come. We share these stories with you because we're excited to see what God is doing to and through our ministry. We are planning for a future that combines the effectiveness of direct in-person ministry with the innovative approaches we learned during the pandemic. To do this, we need you. We need your prayers and your financial support. Amen, John. We're planning to move onward together. Onward together with families, volunteers, area churches, and local schools, all of us working together to reach more and more at-risk youth and their families. For that to happen, we need your help. I'm asking some of you to make a gift of $384 so we can reach one at-risk youth. You can break that up into monthly ongoing gifts or give however it's best for you. I'm asking some of you who have the means to do more to do more. Bottom line, thanks to God, we are poised to come out of this pandemic hitting on all cylinders, but we need you to make that happen. We need you to reach every at-risk youth across greater Cincinnati. To do that, we must do it together. If you have any questions or want any additional information, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. May God bless you and your family. Good night.